Hello and welcome. My name is Robert Levin. I'm a board member of Hapco Philadelphia. Hapco is the largest rental property owner trade association in Philadelphia. I and several Hapco board members join me today to provide critical information and insights into a package of bills recently introduced into Philadelphia City Council, purportedly designed to help tenants and landlords in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. We are going to expose the true flaws and dangers and costs that this bill, package of bills holds that ultimately are more detrimental than beneficial. I'm joined today by fellow board members, Victor Pinckney Sr., first vice president, Greg Workman, second vice president, Maz Alan, secretary treasurer, and board members, Jim Sims and Brian Jackson. HAPCO and its members strongly support the creation and availability of affordable housing. Housing is a basic human need. We all know too well that public programs to assist low and moderate income residents are not nearly sufficiently funded to solve all affordable housing needs, especially now in the COVID-19 world. However, the recently introduced bills by three city council members, Gim, Brooks, and Gautier, do not provide satisfactory solutions. They actually make it far worse. What they are represents just the latest examples of municipal overreach and overregulation. Finding solutions to problems does not happen in a vacuum. All those affected by serious housing issues we face must work together fairly honestly and openly to secure workable results. Unfortunately, rental property owners input was not sought out by the authors of these bills and the resulting legislation is consequently not supported by the housing community nor by law. In just a moment, I'll turn the discussion over to my colleagues from the board of directors of HAPCO Philadelphia who ex explain all the bill's flaws and ultimately uh, make them untenable. It must be pointed out that with so many time consuming and costly regulations for property owners already on the books, these new and onerous regulations will strip any remaining incentives many rental property providers have to remain in the marketplace. Over the years, council has pushed so many draconian laws and orders against the industry that has become increasingly difficult to make affordable housing available to low and moderate income renters and make it financially feasible. Once the myriad requirements, certificates, and inspections are in place, many owners barely have enough money remaining to make necessary repairs and other maintenance, much less capital improvements. As time goes by, a mortgage payment may not be able to be made. Foreclosure could follow. Then neighborhood blight, theft, crime, flight, and abandonment. Ultimately, the city's most vulnerable renter class suffers the most, either by increased rents or shortage of available units. Now, I turn the floor over to Victor Pinckney, Senior First Vice President, Hapco Philadelphia, as we take a closer look at the proposed bills. Mr. Pinckney. Thank, thank you, uh, Rob. For years, the rental property owners and tenants, tenants organizations in the city of Philadelphia have had a good working relationship. While discussions at times have been contentious, there's always been a mutual respect. Seasoned council members have in the past shared proposed legislation with HAPCO in order to give voice to property providers and to, to, to discuss ideas with both sides. This is the way things always had been, but now, it has, seems to me if they've changed. The goal has always been to try to reach a consensus before legislation was introduced. This was not the case with the latest housing bills. This time, the rental property owners organizations were completely shut out. Although they were told legis legislation was coming and the general concepts of it, they were intentionally not provided with any proposed language given an opportunity to provide input on the language or be part of the drafting process. This sends a really bad message and sets a very bad precedent. 
The housing bills that have recently been introduced will first be addressed as a whole, and they will thereafter address the individual bills. Next, I will send you over to our HACO's second vice president, Greg Workman. Thank you very much, Victor. <laughs> I'm going to start with the constitutional issues. On March 6, 2020, the governor of Pennsylvania declared a disaster emergency for the state. And as we have all come to learn, he gives the governor enormous power. Thereafter, Mayor Jim Kenney and Dr. Thomas A. Farley, the health commissioner of the city of Philadelphia, issued an order detailing restrictions on business activity and congregation in Philadelphia starting on March 23rd in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. None of these emergency orders give city council any additional rights to issue orders on their own or pass COVID-19 related ordinances. It is important to understand this in relationship to the bill city council is now trying to pass. Contrary to power and authority the governor or mayor has during a state of emergency, city council in passing legislation still must abide by the law. Specifically, the U.S. Constitution as well as the Pennsylvania Constitution prohibit any law that attempts to overrule a fully executed contract, such as a lease, or make irrevocable any grant or special privileges or immunities. All of the House bills that have been introduced contain a section titled purpose. This section states that if the provisions of the bill conflict with any provisions of the lease, the provisions of the bill shall control. This demonstrates a clear intent by city council to change the bargain for terms of a lease. And you don't need to be a lawyer to know that that's illegal. Under the Pennsylvania Landlord Act, the city of Philadelphia can't pass any laws that conflict with the act. In the act, the rental property owner has the absolute right to take a tenant to court for eviction of non-payment of rent. The governor and the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania have that power and have done so. City council, however, may not. The Pennsylvania Constitution provides all taxpayers have to be treated equally. There is no exclusion for people with COVID-19 hardship. Additionally, the State General Assembly has the authority to provide special provisions in order to alleviate the danger, damage, suffering, or hardship due to the pandemic. Philadelphia City Council does not. I will now yield to my fellow HAPCO board member, Maz Alam. Maz? Thank you, Greg. Uh, I'm going to make a few additional uh, points about const uh, additional constitutional issues. The so-called emergency period is also arbitrary. There is no rational basis for this time period. Why is it two months after all the emergency declarations end? How is that time period related to the particular ordinance and hardship of the tenant? The disaster emergency declared by the governor of the entire state is now being applied differently in each county. In the city of Philadelphia, uh, it, can, uh, it can move to yellow or green status. The fact that the governor's state of emergencies is still in existence is irrelevant to Philadelphia. Now, I'm going to make some comments about the in, uh, individual bills that have been proposed in the council. One of the things is the self-help eviction. We support this bill. If a rental property owner is not complying with the law, they should be penalized. Had we been approached by the council members, there would be no need for this inclusion, or for its inclusion, rather. Public health emergency leave. The bill states that it applies to any individuals who works at least 40 hours in a year 
obviously it's a mistake. It should have stayed 40 hours in a week. As it is written, this passage applies to all employers, regardless of size. For small businesses that have only one employee, this would be a devastating and unconscionable inclusion. This section should be specifically limited to this health emergency only arising from COVID-19. It should not apply to all health emergencies as the emergency might not be relevant to the relief sought here. There are other laws and stimulus packages which have been put in place to protect workers. This bill is overreaching, not necessary, and will adversely impact a small business owner. To continue this discussion, my fellow HAPCO, HAPCO board member, Brian Jackson, will take it from here. Brian? Thank you, Mass. So let's discuss the waiver of fees. Again, first of all, the US Constitution and the Pennsylvania Constitution prohibit any law that grants special privileges or immunities. Late charges and other fees are bargained for part of the lease contract. While most property owners are voluntarily waiving fees during the pandemic, city council does not have the authority to mandate this. Additionally, the waiver of fees applies to all tenants whether or not they have a COVID-19 related financial harm. This disincentivizes tenants from paying their rent on time and must be clarified. Let's also discuss the hardship repayment plan. The constitution also prohibits any due date of the rent that is a bargain for clause in the lease contract to be altered by city council. By the way, what protections are there if the property owner has a COVID-19 related hardship? What relief do they get from paying their mortgage, utilities, taxes, and repairs to the property? There's absolutely no logic behind the proposed payment plan extended for a period of 12 months. Where did that time period even come from? What is it related to? Why is it the same for everyone? What if the tenant will be receiving back unemployment compensation money or even stimulus money? Why shouldn't they pay in full when they receive that money? What if the lease ends before the 12 months? How is the property owner going to be able to pursue collections? These are a lot of questions that we need to address. What relief bills is provided for the property owner for, th for those 12 months. Why should past late fees owed be waived? As such, what incentive does the tenant have to pay each month? They can just wait until the 12 months are up to pay the back money owed or not pay at all. There are no consequence consequences for waiting to pay. The 60 day notice requirement for 12 months appears to be only for the hardship repayment plan and is only for money owed during the COVID-19 emergency period. This needs to be made clear. As such, the 60-day notice does not need to be in place for 12 months. Additionally, this clause will force the property owner to possibly have to wait an additional 60 days before going to court and will cost them another two months of rent. As previously noted, that is a violation of individual property rights. Now I want, to, I want you guys to turn your attention to HAPCO fellow board member, Jim Sims. Thank you, Brian. Today I will be speaking about three items. First is residential eviction relief. The second is eviction diversion program. And the third is rent stabilization. So let's start with the residential eviction relief. Once again, the US Constitution and the Pennsylvania Constitution prohibit city council from overriding the property owner's remedies in the event of non-payment of rent as spelled out and agreed to in the lease. This section is unconstitutional. Additionally, under the Pennsylvania Landlord Tenant Act, the city of Philadelphia may not pass any law that conflicts with the act. The rental property owner has the absolute right to take a tenant to court for eviction for non-payment of rent and is entitled to a hearing within a certain period of time. Next is the eviction diversion program. This bill authorizes the commission or such city department office as 
the mayor may designate to establish a residential eviction diversion program. This is too arbitrary and vague and does not set up any time periods for this to happen and would unduly delay property owners' right to get to court and proceed with an eviction. This delay in the eviction time schedule is preempted by the Pennsylvania Landlord Tenant Act and the Pennsylvania Rules of Civil Procedure, which specifically cover this issue. Let's now move to rent stabilization. The US Constitution and the Pennsylvania Constitution prohibit city council from passing a law retroactively that changes the lease contract the parties have signed. Additionally, this or ordinance is arbitrarily arbitrary. It's being applied to every tenant. If there is no COVID related 19 um, or COVID 19 related hardship, why can't the property owner raise the rent? What is the property? What if the property owner's expenses increase? How are they supposed to be covered? Is the city of Philadelphia going to pass an ordinance preventing any property tax increases or other tax increases during this time? What about increases in utilities, insurance, and other fees and costs? Are they going to be frozen as well? Once again, these are serious constitutional violations. I'll pass it back to my friend, Rob. Thank you, Victor, Greg, Maz, Jim, and Brian for your clear and concise insights. The age old misconception that rental housing property owners are wealthy and greedy is false. Most rental property owners members of HAPCO have between one and 10 units and struggle each month to make ends meet. They are many times small mom and pop businesses. These honest, hardworking souls have taken a lifetime's worth of savings and have chosen to invest in income producing property as their nest egg and as a home for a tenant. However, if a tenant fails to pay the rent when due, the owner's financial circumstances become dire very quickly. Moreover, like virtually nowhere else in the nation, the rental housing sector in Philadelphia is routinely vilified as the bad guy and as the root cause of many societal problems. In fact, rental housing providers are unique in providing both a product and a service. Without them, there is no quality rental property. Rental property owners form the backbone of a growing and healthy metropolis. Real estate tax revenues, school tax money, and city wage tax receipts to the city come disproportionately from rental housing providers and from the workers and contractors they hire. Keep in mind, food like housing is also an essential human need. In Philadelphia, over 325,000 people are food insecure. Think for a moment if city council attempted to regulate the food service sector as is being proposed for housing in the bill set out by the three council members. A free on food prices, limited price increases, food strike, or free food for a year, not a likely scenario. Tenants, rental property owners, and council must work together for real solutions not more regulation. No matter how well-intentioned the three council members may be in their outreach to constituents, the imperative is to reach out to HAPCO and the Philadelphia Real Estate Co Coalition, as well as partners in state and federal government. On behalf of my HAPCO Philadelphia colleagues, Victor Pickney Sr., Greg Workman, Maz Alam, Brian Jackson, Jim Sims, the entire HAPCO Philadelphia Board of Directors, and to Paul Cohen, thank you for watching and being a part of the HAPCO Philadelphia community.